Welcome to homemade cooking. Hello, everyone. Hi. Hello, Lena. Hello, Debbie. Ah, a calming presence always. Hello. Welcome, everyone. All coming in. Let's see view gallery. Who else we have? Yes. Hello, Steve. Hello, Michael. Hello, Amy. Hello, Nancy. Wonderful to see you guys. Where's everyone calling from today? I want to hear. We're in beautiful Seattle that I can't believe I'm going to say this, but it was a little sunny today. They're throwing parades all over the city. It's a big deal. Where are we all coming from? Let's see here. Hello. From Dallas. Yes. Lo Arkansas. California. Raining in California. I mean, how is it sunny in Seattle, but it's raining in California? I don't understand. The math doesn't work out, guys. Hello from Minnesota, Ithaca, New York. Hello, Linda. Hello, Deb. Wonderful to see everyone. How are we all doing? We are, I mean, I consider this part of November, this is deep November, guys. This is deep November because in one more week, the year is going to be a blur. So we're gonna, we have to take time and celebrate root vegetable pot pie and just really treat ourselves because about a week, it's going to get crazy, right? Hello, Glenn. Hello, Laura. Wonderful to see everyone. Guys, it's wonderful to see you. I see so many beautiful returning faces. We love to see you if you're comfortable turning on your camera. It's always wonderful to see our family new and returning. If you're new to homemade cooking, I am Chef Jenny. I'm going to be your chef today. And we spend about an hour cooking an amazing recipe, teaching you all our favorite things about it. You should all have the recipe and you can make this at home if you feel inspired. I know some, is anyone cooking along today? A little bit. Sometimes we get bleeding. Yes. All right. Hello, Rachel. All right. I love to see it. Um, I, I'm so excited about today's class, and let me tell you why. Often we get to pair with amazing partners to do these classes with, and we're very picky. Homemade only goes with partners that we really believe in and are really excited for, and everyone here is so excited about this class because we are partnering with American Diabetes Association. They're wonderful people. Not only are we partnering with them, but we're lucky to have them in the house today. Say hello to Julie. Say hello to Viola. They are here. They are ready to answer any questions you have throughout class. So as I'm cooking about diabetic cooking, about diabetic health, you can go ahead and put it in the chat. They are going to answer those about certain ingredients, replacements, whatever you've got. And especially know this, if I leave you with one thing today, know this, diabetesfoodhub.org. I'm going to say it again because it's really important. Diabetesfoodhub.org is the recipe page. We were drooling over it earlier today. We've been drooling over it for weeks. You have holiday recipes on there. My favorite, cranberry sauce. We've got winter salads. We've got um, different ethnic foods. I saw um, a real Spanish rice, on, rice pudding on there. We've got breakfast, lunch, dinner, any and everything you can think of. Beautiful recipes, including this one on their site. Again, one more time, diabetesfoodhub.org. And not only are we lucky enough to partner with the ADA today, but we also have another partner of theirs who are part of this class, which is Alignment Health Plan. Alignment understands that overall health is really connected to how your overall health of your eating is. And because they appreciate that and because they applaud that, they partner with the American um, Diabetes Association and so they help sponsor these classes. They're amazing people. We're so lucky to have them because they're such huge advocates of health for everyone and all. So really big deal big class today everyone hello lee hello michelle hello ray got so many wonderful people joining us um so we're gonna get into it we've got chef george on the keys he's running the chat if you have a question for him go ahead and add it in there and he can ask us. If you want to ask a question throughout class, go ahead and raise your little hand and George can, on your Zoom, and George can um, notify me and we can answer it. And of course, once again, Julie and Iola, they're here from the American Diabetes Association and they're here to answer your questions. So add them in the chat about cooking and healthy cooking and um, they will help you out there. So we'll get into it. Okay, what are we making? 
That's the most important thing. What are we making? Family style pot pie. I like a recipe that starts with family because that means to me less dishes. It's usually in one pot, so that's where we're going here. Nothing against mini pot pies. I love a little mini pot pie, but we're doing this. We're making a pot pie filling here, a chicken pot pie. We're doing it in a pie pan. And then that way you can just slice it one pot for dinner that you're serving out of, not little mini ramekins. Really nice for the holidays. We're doing um, chicken breast. We have a ton of beautiful root vegetables and we've got a, a great flaky whole wheat pie crust. That This is, I'm just, not everyone's a turkey person for Thanksgiving. So I'm throwing it out there, guys. You have an opportunity to go ahead and maybe work this into that week of um, meals. So um, we're gonna get going to here. Put your questions in the chat and let's start this beautiful family style pot pie. First off, I've got here, just let me reach over here, I've got some chicken breast, about a pound. I have them sliced up just to cook a little more um, um, quicker, but I've got them cut evenly. That's the most important thing you've got to know here is that if you have different sized pieces, which is fine, if they're different, you have to cut them down to make sure they're the same size. If you cook a giant chicken breast, and sometimes those packs of chicken will have that little guy in there. I don't know what he's doing in there. I think he's in there to make the weight on the packaging. But if you don't cut the rest of your chicken evenly, that little guy is really going to overcook and dry out. And the big piece is going to be cooked on the outside around the middle. So we've got some chicken here. I've got some water back here boiling up. I'm going to come back here and add this in getting ready to boil up. It's not boiling yet. The reason is, is because if you are poaching chicken breast, which is essentially this is what we're doing. If you add it into cold water, the chicken will come up evenly and it'll cook evenly through. If you throw chicken into roiling boil water, boiling water like you are pasta, then the outside's gonna cook really quickly, the inside's gonna be raw, and then you're gonna have dried out outside and kind of really just getting cooked in interior. That doesn't sound appetizing to anyone. It definitely doesn't sound appetizing to me. So I'm adding these guys in cold water just back here. Gonna bring it up to a boil and then reduce to a simmer. And we're gonna cook this for about 15 minutes, depending on how cold your breasts are. So if you're still slightly dethawing them, yeah, they're going to take a little longer. If you take them out and they, they're been out for about 20 minutes yeah, and they're small, they might go quicker. So what we're most looking for is for the interior between 160 and 165. We want these guys to be cooked. And then we're going to shred it. So this is easily something you can do with leftover chicken breasts that you have. We just want some shredded chicken here. So I'm going to come down here, top down, to my veg. We're using really beautiful autumn vegetables. Does anyone know what this guy is? Let me see. Let's see in the chat. Do we know what this guy is? It's not a white carrot, so that's not the answer. Do we know what this guy is? A white, do we see white carrot? Anyone, George? Anyone? I'm not, parsnip, yes! Yes! I don't know who said parsnip. Lena, yes! Parsnip. This is a parsnip. It's a root vegetable. It's similar in the carrot family. It's around everywhere right now. Beautiful flavor. It's adding to our root vegetables. We're not using cream. We're not doing dairy like a lot of pot pies have because we're, it's really important, especially with diabetic cooking, and we're trying to watch how much fat we're having, especially saturated fat. So we are going to make and saute our vegetables here, and then we're going to puree a good amount of it, and that's going to make our sauce. So we love all the root vegetables. This is a parsnip. I'm just going to go ahead and peel this guy. Here at Homemade, we love a wide peeler. I gave it a good scrub. This, is, this was always my job when I told my mom I wanted to to help her cook. She's like, oh yeah, you can peel these. I would get so excited. I thought it was something like right field and baseball. It's like, oh, they're giving it to only the most special players. And then you realize it was just something to keep me busy. But this is a great way to get the kids involved, guys. You don't need to tell them that it's the uh, B job here. So we're just getting this guy. It is important to give these guys a good scrub because the skin, it's a root vegetable. So that means it grows in the ground. So these guys can get pretty dirty here. 
Again, once again, I want to direct you guys to diabetesfoodhub.org if you're thinking about, oh, I, I want to see more recipes like this. I especially want to see recipes for the holidays. This is, this is the place to go. Again, there was a cranberry sauce on there that I was really excited about. So we have a person up here. I'm going to chop it. You can see that this white, this length here is much wider than down here. So I'm going to go ahead and cut my skinny part there. Cut this guy in half and then just start making little sticks and that way I can make a dice. You do not have to be a French trained chef where everything is perfect here. We're not looking for the most beautiful little perfect dice or cuts. Again, like the chicken though, what we want you all to know is that you want all of these dices to be close in the same size. It's because everything will then cook at the same rate. That way we won't have something completely mushy and then we won't have something completely overdone. We've also got in here in the pool, just to show down, we got our bowl here. We have beautiful carrots. We have celery. We have onions. This to me is the fall veggie spectacular. You will actually see these veggies packed together at the store sometimes because they know, hey, we know and you know you're making stuffing, so just buy all the stuff. Sometimes they'll throw herbs in there, so this stuff is out and center right now. I'm just gonna go ahead and finish cutting this. Beautiful, I love too right now is a really exciting time. Exciting for a chef. Guys, I want you to be as excited about this too. You can find rainbow carrots out a lot right now. So when you see all the beautiful colors, that will also brighten this up and add some beautiful tones in. Again, I want to um, direct you guys that Julie and Viola are here, and they're here from um, the American Diabetes Association to answer any questions you have about cooking in the chat. Chef George, how are we doing? Do we have any questions? Yes, looks like our first question is, is the water season for the chicken? No, so I, the only thing I added to the water there that's a great question is black pepper. We're really trying to be mindful of our sodium. That's really important when we're doing healthier cooking. And so the, we are using chicken stock later, low sodium chicken stock, but that's gonna add plenty of seasoning. So I added black pepper in there. Because we are doing chicken stock, you can add some aromatics like the leftover celery fronds. If you have parsley, some garlic, some peppercorns, throw that in there with your chicken. After you pull it out, you can strain that and you can use that as your chicken broth. Just saying, you're kind of making a quick chicken broth there. Up to you. It depends on how much time you have. It depends on whether or not you're using leftover chicken or not. Great question. I don't know who asked that, George. That's a great question. All right. Nice call out, guys. I like those questions. Keep them coming. Okay. So I've got my pan here. I'm going to go ahead and just turn it on here to about medium heat. I've got some vegetable oil here, two teaspoons. Adding that in, and you want a bigger pan. You want one with nice high sides, everyone. And then I'm gonna add my veg in. This is the base of our sauce. We're gonna leave a portion of the veggies in here. We're not blending all of it because like traditional pot pie, I like getting that little chunk of carrot. I like getting that little chunk of celery. Nice little surprise. I like texture. And when you're doing healthier cooking, it's important to remember, like, you have to have a mix of textures. You have to have a mix of temperature, something hot, something cold. You have to have a mix of all the flavors of sweet, salty, bitter, savory, everything around. Everyone in the pool here. Now I've got this going. And we're just going to saute this up. You could absolutely make this pot pie filling the day before and then assemble it all the next day. Make your crust, add it in. And I'm just gonna get my veggies here. Our goal of what we're looking for is to have our vegetables soft and tender. So I did add two teaspoons fat. We're not wanting too much fat here, just some nice vegetable oil. You can use olive oil if you want. But what you wanna know is as these veggies start to saute here, you might actually um, want to do add the instinct. You're going to have the instinct of, oh, my pan's looking a little dry, so I'm going to want to add more oil. 
I'm going to ask you to resist the overwhelming urge to put fat in everything. I have it deep in me. I'm Sicilian and Mexican. That's my status quo, all right? It's just, I, let's put some olive oil over that. But these veggies have plenty of flavor. They don't need a lot of fat. If you use a non-stick skillet like I am here, it helps with that cooking. But also, I just have a little bit of water here. So if you start noticing your pans dry, maybe your veggies are starting to sick, stick, just deglaze a little bit with some water. That's more than fine. That's going to actually help our veggies get a little more tender. I do like to try to get a little bit of color on here because that caramelization will add some flavor into our final product. So just have these guys, I'm thinking about, you know, somewhere between five to eight minutes. Our chicken's over there simmering. I'm gonna cover it now, because they've gotten out to nice boil. Again, you can strain that water and use it as your broth. You just wanna make sure you skim off the top because you can get some foam on top of there. I love thyme, whatever herbs you have around, just throw in there and it'll really flavor your water as that chicken simmers. Let me just, Make sure we're getting a little higher there. All right, any questions, George? How are we doing out there? Could you use low sodium chicken stock instead of water for the chicken? One more time, Chef George. Could you use low sodium chicken stock instead of uh, water for the chicken? Yeah, you could absolutely use low sodium chicken stock instead of water for the chicken. You could absolutely do that if you have leftover. We definitely wanted to try for our nutrition facts try to um, tighten up how much extra sodium we're using, but that's completely up to you. You guys do that. The good thing, the thing that I, we love about partnering with the American Diabetes Association, especially if you guys go to diabetesfoodhub.org, because there's so much wonderful information on there, is that everyone's different. Everyone's health is different based on what your doctor tells you. So everyone, you can kind of customize your cooking to what you need and what your specific diet preferences are. But overall, we're really wanting to try to watch our carbs here. We're trying to watch our sodium and our low, um, and keep things lower sodium, and really use lean proteins. It smells like Thanksgiving in here right now. There's no other way to describe this. There's something magical. There is a, a, a culinary magic that happens when celery and onions and carrots start sauteing to each other together. I mean, I kind of, I, I feel like I, a turkey should be walking by right now. I feel like I need that somewhere there should be a, just a giant pumpkin on the side. This all, this is what holidays smell like to me. This is how you know it's, it's happening, is when you start smelling this. Kind of the base of a lot of stuffing. Does anyone put carrots in their stuffing? Throw it in the chat, I want, I want to hear. Carrots in the stuffing. I've been to some houses where carrots pop up in the stuffing, and I'm always like, what is that? What's happening? You know what? A delightful treat, a delightful addition. I feel like people are going to be really passionate about this one. It looks like Aaron has a question. Yeah, Aaron. Or, or sorry. Are, are hey you, hi, how you doing? Hi yeah, it's AR. That's what it is. Hey, Jenny. Hi. So, you know, this is one of these um, dishes where you can use your judgment and your preferences and put all sorts of things in it, right? Absolutely. Let me ask you, what, what vegetables would you not put in a chicken pot pie? Honestly, I mean, I think these any veggies that go in here are going to be delicious. I will say... I understand the struggle is real during the summer with zucchini. If you grow, I'm from California, the zucchinis out there are like the size of your head, the size of my forearm. I could know there's a, a reason why yep. people might want to use those up, but those have a ton of moisture in them. And so it kind of might yes. waterlog your pie a little bit. If you use, I say like a, um, yellow or a uh, zucchini squash. But, I mean, still delicious. It's just we're looking for a nice creamy sauce here. In that instance, you might just want to reduce how much water or stock you're adding. But really, I think that's what's so beautiful about this dish. It welcomes all the vegetables. We don't discriminate here. Great question. Thank you so yeah, much. I think, it's, uh, it's, I think it's interesting, that, but 
this is. I thought it might be interesting to find out what you would avoid. Uh, Jennifer thinks that water chestnuts and currants are two to avoid. If I'm reading the chat correctly. Well, now I'm wondering. I don't. Now I'm going to be food police and say I don't think currants are vegetables. But is, right, right. I think currants we go into. We're getting into the fruit territory, guys. So, she might have been talking about what's going in stuffing. I think oh, that's I think maybe thing. that's probably something. I have had in currants and stuffing, and that is delicious. Yeah. Yeah. Also, I'm glad to hear that chat's active, guys. Please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, let me just do a top down because this is too beautiful. Do not hesitate to reach out to Julie or to Viola in the chat if you guys have any questions about cooking and that are diabetes friendly recipes or ingredients. It's such, we're so lucky. It's such a precious thing to have them here. They're such incredible resources. It's really, really lucky to have um, smarties like them, guys. So we're talking our here, all right? These are pros. Yeah. So uh, please throw them in there. I was thinking, I was thinking oak, okra might be a pretty, not such a good choice for a, a pot pie as well. Oh, yeah, okra. Did you say okra? Yeah, yeah that, it might be difficult to do that correctly and well in a pot pie. Yeah, I think the one thing you might need to be mindful about that is the carbohydrates on that. But okra huh. also, because of those carbohydrates, really seizes up stews. I think that's why it's a big ingredient in gumbo. So um, yeah. it also can tend to get a little slimy, for lack of a better right. word. I don't mind it. If you're not prepared for the texture, it might be a little overwhelming. So great questions. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. So far. Thank you. Yeah. Happy holidays to you. Are we saying that? Is it time? Can we say happy holidays? Do I need to give it like two more weeks? I, I'm just defaulting. I'm saying it already, guys. I'm smelling onions, carrots, and celery. All right. Next up, we're going to do some garlic. I'm going to do a little top down here. If you guys don't know, Chef Joel leans on garlic to press it. You can also take your knife blade away from you and press it like that and kind of smash it. Garlic fingers, the struggle's real. Who, who's fighting that demon? I'm, I am constantly. Something to know that's a little trick that they say is rubbing your hands on something that has stainless steel can actually take that garlic smell, binds the sulfur compounds off of your hands. I, it works okay. I find time. Time is the only thing that really gets that garlic smell off their hands. Have you guys tried that? Anyone tried stainless, stainless steel to get that potent garlic off your hands? I'm using a couple cloves here. If you're like me, you instantly triple whatever amount of garlic is on a recipe. Like I said, I'm Italian. It's, just, I can't, it's not even an option for me. So we're adding in here. Our veggies are soft, beautiful. If, as if this didn't smell amazing already, now we're adding garlic in here. Really, really good. My pan's a little dry. That's okay. You just add a little water in, guys. Nothing wrong with that. Controlling the heat. We just don't want anything to be burning. Really good. Really, really good. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, there is, is there anything more divine than the smell that emits after garlic hits a, pan, a warm, hot pan? Oh, it smells so good. Okay, got these guys in here just for about a minute. You don't need to do much longer than that. You go longer than a minute, what happens is that you're going to start, um, you can potentially, we're not looking for deeply dark brown garlic. When you, if you get garlic too brown, you can't go back. If it burns, it emits a really kind of bitter flavor. No matter what you add to it, it's really hard to go back from that. So try, try not to burn the garlic. I walk away. I'm a chef. I try to multitask, and I'm, oh, I'm notorious. I, you have to focus. You can't go anywhere. It's like burning the bread in the oven. you got to stay here and watch the garlic, guys. So about a minute. Oh, it just smells. It smells so good. I have a combination here of low-sodium chicken broth and water. I just cut this with a little bit of water because we're just trying to watch um, our sodium. Again, if you season that water, you can go ahead and add that in there as well. So I'm going to add this in. I'm going to add my heat, just increase my heat a little bit. The reason is I just want to bring this up to a boil, get it all evenly warmed through, and then I am going to reduce it down. Oh, hold on, guys. The, st the stove's fighting me. There we go. Oh. 
So now, beautiful flavor in here. Really nice flavor. I can hear back here, timing. Got my chicken done. That guy's going. So now I'm gonna pull this guy out. You have a food thermometer, especially we're talking pre-holidays here, everyone. Get a food thermometer. If you don't have one, I cannot recommend one enough. Don't be the family that serves raw turkey accidentally. No one will forget that. They talk about you. Maybe they're like, oh, it's okay, don't worry about it. They talk about you behind your back. All right, don't be that family. You don't wanna be that household. Food thermometers are really important. Not just like we're baking a pie here today. It's just not important to have a food thermometer for the actual food that you're cooking, like our chicken breast, making sure they're at the right temp. But you wanna make sure your oven's running at the correct temperature. Do we all know if we have an oven that's a little wonky? Maybe it's a little hot. Maybe it's too cold and you have to turn it to 500 degrees every time. They're not supposed to do that, guys. They're supposed to kind of keep in a range around. So if you don't know, they make oven thermometers. They just hang off the rack in the oven. It's really important for even good solid cooking. We add that in there. You know how if you set your oven to 350 and it's at 425, woo! Time to get that kind of um, worked out. Ovens can be recalibrated. They're actually meant to. Sometimes after several years, they can get off a little bit. You look at just the um, manufacturer's website, you can find how to do that. Really good for cooking too. Again, guys, if you're looking for holiday recipes, if you're looking for more recipes that are balanced, delicious like this, we wanna go to diabetesfoodhub.org. And again, just want to give another wonderful shout out to our other partners, Alignment Health Plan. They are a wonderful group of people that really appreciate and highlight how important healthy cooking is to overall health. So important. Lots of flavor. I'm going to get my guy over here. I'm going to go get our chicken now. This goes for about 10 minutes. So if you just want to see again, look at this beautiful hot tub of be wonderful autumn vegetables just simmering away that's a little warm i'm gonna go we want them more to simmer at this stage i got some fresh ground black pepper really important when we're trying to cook healthy cooking in general this just isn't cooking healthy anytime you're cooking you want to get the most flavor you won't miss a ton of fat or s sodium which are kind of feel like cheap flavor replacements if you're using high quality ingredients. So that's why we're using seasonal vegetables right now because they're at their peak of flavor. Fresh ground pepper is something else you can do that really pumps up the flavor. The difference between fresh ground pepper and pre-ground pepper is astronomical. That might seem like a dramatic word to use, but I'm standing by it. It's astronomical, the difference, y'all. I really, really like me a fresh ground pepper. I'm that guy when they have fresh ground pepper at the restaurant for your salad. I get a huge amount of it as well as Parmesan cheese. I'm that person. So you can see our veggies just simmering away there. We got our chicken going over here. I'm gonna give those guys just a one more minute. They're almost done and then we're gonna shred this. So next up pretty soon after this, we're going to get our filling assembled here. The next thing I want to tell you that we're going to do is make pie crust. We're making whole wheat pie crust. I am so excited for this crust recipe. I am a pastry chef by training. I love whole wheat pie crust. The quality of whole wheat flour out there today, really, really nice. You get all the fiber in whole wheat flour, that's just really important for health. It makes us feel fuller. It has plenty of great um, positive benefits to it. And I, I've, just from a chef perspective, I think a little whole wheat flour in your pie crust adds so much more flavor. There's almost a nuttiness to it, which the f a depth of flavor, I just don't want straight, straight kind of flour tasting. I want a depth. So that's why that's really nice. I'm getting my tons here. Give this guy a stir. If anyone's got their veggies on the stove, you are feeling the autumn vibes right now. This is just, I want to dip my face in here and get a facial from all of these veggies. Yum, 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 yum. So we're getting a good simmer here. And come get our chicken. Again, you can use leftover shredded chicken if you have a bunch of chicken breasts, if you do it for meal planning at the beginning of the week. 
Meal planning is great. It's really important for helping to stick to healthier cooking just because I know that grind from coming home from work and you're really tired and you just don't feel like cooking. That is also something why the, why the diabetesfoodhub.org website is so nice because they had things like sheet pan dinners, really quick recipes that come together when you're just feeling really, frankly, just tired and over it during the middle of the week. I always find out that's when I eat out. You always get that extra fat and sodium when you eat out in the middle of the week. So it's nice to have a backup plan to know. And I always, even being a chef, sometimes you just run out of ideas. So really want to direct you guys there. It's really helpful to get new ideas. And it looks like Rachel has a question. Yes, please. Let's hear it. Does the chicken need to be fully cooked or will it finish cooking in the oven? I would recommend fully cooking it. If you can get just for the most even cooking because we're only cooking in the um, oven to get our crust done. So it's really important that this is fully cooked in here. So I'm just going to check our breast right now. One thing that people um, will tell you about, oh yeah, that looks great. Start shredding it a little bit, can do top down. Somewhat, I've seen people shred chicken, and I just have two forks, old school guys. I know there's gadgets out there that will actually shred your chicken. I am low gadgets in the kitchen. I've lived in too many small places my whole life where I can't have a gadget just for shredding chicken. But if it gets you guys cooking every week, do it. No shame. Go for it. I've also seen people shred chicken. You know what? We're going to the board. This is just much easier on the board. Um, I've seen people shred chicken in a KitchenAid with your paddle. If you put it in there, that'll actually... This is cool enough. Only do this if you've if it's at the right temperature for you guys. And Break it like up Elizabeth pieces. has a question. Yes, please. Could you use this whole wheat pie crust for a quiche or pumpkin pie? You could absolutely use this pie crust for a quiche or pumpkin pie. I mean, once you have a good crust, that recipe that recipe is with you forever. You can transfer to whatever you need. I think it would be great for those recipes because, again, we're talking about the nuttiness that you get from the whole wheat. It's really, really nice. So I'm just shredding my chicken here. Um, something really important to know, too, that, again, we keep talking about the holidays. I'm sorry if it's triggering everyone. I know. They're right around the corner. But if you make, you guys like this pie crust recipe, Make it now, freeze it, wrap it up tightly, throw it in the freezer. Now is the time. I know it seems like a quick recipe, but man, when you're in it, you just can't, it's so hard to think ahead. It's so hard to get there. The, the, it's like finding gold. I was in my freezer last week reorganizing and I found a pie crust I forgot about. I felt like I won the lottery. It is not as good as that $2 billion Powerball going on right now, but it was close. The euphoria I felt was close to finding hidden pie crust in my freezer. <laughs> just because it was just such a gem. I made an apple tart and I was very excited about it. So make some now, bust them out. It's never a bad thing to have in your freezer. You can also make gravy right now. I know there's some great recipes for all different types of holiday foods on the diabetesfoodhub.org. Go ahead and give it a look. Beautiful chicken. Got all my chicken kind of shredded here. This is great. Again, this is something you could do the day before. Got my veggies going. All right. Look at that. So got our guys here. The last thing I'm going to do is I just have some herbs. I have some sage and some thyme. Ah, oh, the best. Going to smell really good over here. You have rosemary? Throw some rosemary in there. What herbs you got in your garden? Er, all the herbs. I love all the herbs. If you want to know, just pinch this guy. Pinch it at the top to get these little leaves off. If you pull, look at that. You got your leaves. It's the easy way to take um, these off the stem. Sage is really woodsy. I don't know how else to describe sage other than woodsy. It makes me feel like a little hobbit in the woods whenever I have sage. It's a wonderful flavor. And time together... All these things kind of come into season together. They're all really in abundance right now. And that's something to think of because I don't know if you've ever heard if it grows together, it goes together. All these beautiful flavors that are seasoned at the same time, they really complement each other. And again, using fresh herbs is another great trick for really healthy eating 
because you're getting so much flavor and then you're not being tempted to use a bunch of salt or fat. How are we doing out there, Chef George? Again, guys, if you have any questions for Royal or Julie, you're so lucky to have them at your disposal here. Throw those into the chat. Yes, if you are going to freeze the dough, would you roll it out or keep it balled up first? I would flatten it into a disc. And the reason is a ball is too hard to roll out. And what's going to happen is that you're going to overwork your dough. On the other hand, I mean, you can do it in a disc, but I think it, with it being so thin, you're gonna have a good chance of it cracking. So I would just keep it, chopping these fresh herbs together, yum, yum. Now we're fully holiday. I would just keep it in a flat disc. I would wrap it in plastic wrap, and then I would throw it into a freezer safe bag. Because there is a little bit of fat in there, fat absorbs flavors in the freezer. So if you don't have it really well wrapped, you might be tasting something and kind of get an off flavor there. So you really want to make sure you wrap it really well. You also don't want that moisture to escape in the dough. So um, make sure you wrap it really good. Kind of a flattened disc. You'll see when I do it here. All right. Uh, I hope you guys are cooking at home. This, this is smelling incredible. So we have chicken. We have herbs. Everyone's happy. They're in the pool. So... We're gonna take, we now have our veg, our beautiful veg over here. And here's what we're gonna do with this. We are going to blend a good portion of it. And this is what our papaya sauce is gonna be. So we're not adding a ton of cream to this. We have this beautiful veg in here. By blending a portion of it up, because we have these root vegetables like carrot, like parsnip, it's going to get really creamy. And then that's going to be the base, that sauce of our pie. And honestly, it's going to have, I feel like a lot of times it can be really one-dimensional, that pot pie flavor. You're getting the same flavor over again. By using root vegetables as our sauce, in the celery and the onions and the garlic, you're gonna get this really, it's almost like a root vegetable soup in there with the chunks of the veggies and the chicken and then you have the crust over the top. Oh my goodness. So I'm doing about two cups in here, two and a half cups. That's what you want. You want some of that liquid in here too because the liquid is gonna help um, make it a puree, help the puree up a little sooner. So I'm gonna grab some of that. Just add this in here. Beautiful. That's about, let me do the top down here. That's about how much veg I want left. I'm talking about two and a half cups or so. We yes. love a food processor. Food processors really help us blend um, food up quicker. Helps cooking, especially midweek, much easier. So we got our food process here. Add these guys in. It's going to get a little loud, but that's going to pulse this up. You can see it's just pureeing. About 10 minutes of cooking those veggies to nice and tender. And that it's gonna continue to cook additionally in the oven. And we have all these fresh herbs we're gonna fold in along with our shredded chicken breast. Yum, 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 yum here. Honestly, even without the crust, this portion here, I could just eat and be pretty happy with. And look at that. Oh, and look. it looks like we got one more question. Yes, please. Will the sauce get thicker? Will the sauce get thicker in the oven? Yes. Yeah, some of that moisture will um, cook off a little bit. But it is, I mean, you can see right here, look how thick that is. If you want a thicker sauce, pour more of these veggies in. Or add a little less broth or water in there, and that'll get a, a thicker sauce. So now we have our veggies in here. Now we're adding in all that beautiful herb. Again, you got some rosemary, throw it in. You got some parsley, throw it in. We have our gorgeous chicken. And we're just stirring this around. And now we have a beautiful pot pie filling. I could just eat this. This is terrific. I don't even need the crust of the pour this in a bowl and I'm ready to go. Those herbs, I mean, it was smelling incredible, but those herbs just took it. We were, we were here, but now we are here. We haven't even had the crust yet, guys, and we're already here. So this is very exciting. We're in a good spot. 
Um, I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna do our pie crust next. Pull this over. This guy's just gonna sit over here. I just dropped a ladle. I heard it. Gonna put this over here. It's gonna cool off. That's fine as we're going. Next up, we're gonna work on our pie crust. So, got over here our bowl. Let, let's see it. who makes pie crust at home. It's okay if you're a store-bought. There's no shame in it. I, I, I'm a pie crust girl. It's okay. Debbie, I appreciate the vulnerability and the honesty of shaking the head. That's okay. We all don't have to be pie crust people. I know it. It's, it's a lot. But I want to take away the fear. I want to make pie crust accessible to you all. In case I haven't said it, you want your oven at 400 degrees. If, this would be a great time to start preheating if you hadn't already. So we've got our bowl here. We're going to start get going here. Again, I'm talking whole wheat flour. That is what we're talking about. Whole wheat flour. I'm going to add this in. Lovely amount here. Now, what helps with our calories on this dish is that we're only doing a single crust. So we're just doing a crust on top. I love that. I don't need a crust on the bottom. A lot of times the crust on the bottom, say with me guys, soggy bottom. We've all watched Great British Baking, soggy bottom, okay? So because there's so much moisture and vegetables in our beautiful dish there, even if we had a crust on the bottom, it might make it a little soggier. But we have so much flavor because of the whole wheat here that we are going to um, not really miss that bottom crust. So I've got here our flour, a little salt. My butter is coming. Got some ice water. This is really important. I just want you all to know, water is great for this, but what makes your flakes is ice. We want ice, ice cold water. We are using vegan butter for this recipe. It's really important, that's what's helping us save on calories here. It is an amazing time to be alive if you're looking for plant-based products and substitutes. There are so many high-quality products out there. We have some of our favorites. We're using Earth Balance here. I think they have really good, high-quality stuff. We're not going to over-mix this to the point where it absolutely disappears. We're trying to get, um, we're really trying to get little pillows, little pillows of butter. And Chef George is going to get our butter for us. And um, when we work this in here, we're going to get little pockets of fat. If we overwork this and we use room temperature butter, our fat is going to melt out. You'll still have a crust, but keeping these guys cold, they puff up when you go in the oven, and that's what creates flakes. So if you will need to know one thing about pie crust, it's keep it cold. I used to teach cooking classes. What I would say is cold fat, hot oven. We're using a 400 degree oven, cold fat, hot oven. If I ever was going to get face tattoo, guys, it would be cold fat, hot oven. It's the most important basic principle of pastry. So top down, let's go. Salt, whole wheat flour mixed together. I've got my cold vegan butter out of the fridge. Now my hands our body temperature, if you touch your hands, they're warm. So if I start and go in here and mix with my hands, what I'm going to do is start melting this butter. There's something called a pastry blender. It kind of like when you hold it, you look like Wolverine a little bit. You can go and work that in here. Malt school. You can also do it in our food processor. I'm just using two knives. I'm cutting up. I'm cutting up little chunks. You can see little chunks in here. We don't want this to be obliterated. We still want to see pieces, everyone. Pieces are really important. Piece identity is important because that's going to be the way I would equate it to is when you plug in an air mattress and it puffs up. That's what cold fat in a pie crust in an oven will do. It'll puff up. If you break these down too much, I'm just going to do cold hands here. A little trick is you can tip in ice water and then go in here just smush these up a little bit. We're almost there. Not too much. Pea size is what you've heard. Kind of like that. That's what you're looking for. Almost like that. If you can see. You don't want a couple big chunks, but we're looking really good here. 
Wonderful. Again, guys, please, you have Julie and Viola. They're here from American Diabetes Association. They can answer your questions if you've got them. So this recipe will say, that's it. We, I'm not blending this anymore. Now, it might be really frustrating. I'm going to add four tablespoons of this cold water in here. Pastry, I love pastry because I'm a scientist. I'm a food scientist. I really like things being weighed out and exact. And usually that's how pastry is. And it's very overwhelming for people to see. I'm just going to get a spoon here. That, hey, why isn't your pastry, why do you have a range of water on your pastry? Well, like we saw, everyone's all over the country today. The moisture in the air in Arkansas versus Minnesota versus Seattle may not be the same, which means how dry our pastry flour, our whole wheat flour, they might have different moisture amounts. Also, the older your flour is, it's going to be more dried out and require more water. So that's why you usually see a range. Well, okay, great, but then what am I looking for? Hands, squeeze. Do you see how this is, see this? This is dry, we need more. So we started with four, we get a range. I'm gonna do one. You don't wanna pile it up, you kinda wanna put it around the edges. Use my spoon so I'm not using my hot hands. Mix this around. The very last minute, I just need to get my hands in there and see. You see, did you see the little change, how it started coming together a little bit? That's what you're looking for, everyone. That's what we want. So we got these guys in here. Now watch this. Look at that. You see how that came together? That's what I want. So you can just dump this on your board. If I dump this on my board here, again, we're only doing a single crust. Put it together. Just gently, we're not, we're not kneading bread, guys. That's not what we're doing. Do not overwork it. There's gluten in this dough. Gluten gets very elastic and gets tough. In bread, you want gluten because you have yeast producing gas, and that, that gas is going to give you plenty of lift. We don't have any gas in here. We don't have any baking soda, any baking powder. Our only leavener is these little air mattresses of butter that are gonna puff. So we've got this, when I said a flat disc for the freezer, that's a flat disc. So we're gonna go ahead and take this, put this guy in here, wrap it up. Because our gluten is very active, you could try to roll this out right now, you're gonna keep rolling and it's gonna keep springing back. Has that ever happened to anyone? Have you tried to roll out a dough and no matter how hard you push, it just springs back. It's because your gluten is too active. So we have to let our gluten rest. It needs to take a little nap, half an hour in the fridge, even an hour. You can make this the day before. Again, you could freeze it for up to a year. I'm gonna make a little egg wash and we need our other dough now. I'm gonna add an egg and a teaspoon of water and I'm just gonna mix this together. And now I'm gonna roll out a crust for our pie. This is what we call pastry glue, everyone. Pastry glue, egg wash. It also gives you a nice shine. So we got our egg wash. We have our dough. We're gonna do the magic of television here. Add a little side flour here to roll out. And here's a dough we rolled out before, or made before. And you see, look at that, okay. Do you see my little air mattresses? That's what we want. So don't overwork this dough. It's had a chance to chill out. It's fully relaxed. It's just coming back from a spa. It's feeling really good. So a little flour. Do not take this and dump this out. Only use a little bit that you need. This is called a French rolling pin. It has tapered ends here. So here's what you need to know to get flaky pie crust. Center, out. I am not going over the edge like this. Out, back to center, out. Because then I seal the edges if I go over and my air mattress can't puff in the oven. Center, out, center, out. Turn. 
And now this is how I'm making an even circle. We're looking for about, depend, it all depends, guys, on the width, the diameter of your pie tin. I would like a really, you might have some leftover. That's okay. You can heat this up and eat it. It all depends. This is meant for a 10-inch pie tin or pie dish. We have a beautiful baking ceramic dish here. Do you see how I'm just kind of turning it? And if I'm starting to get a little stick, then that's when I add a flour. There's plenty of beautiful pastry recipes on diabetes, diabetesfoodhub.org. If you're liking this, you're like, oh, whole wheat, all right, I'm seeing the tricks here. Go on to them. You can also flip your dough. You see all this beautiful butter or vegan butter that's in there? It's great. It really works up. And then now I'm just going to be fancy. Now I'm going to just be extra. You do not have to do this. But if you want, you can take a paring knife and take a little bit out of the top. I can put it right next to it. And with the back of my knife, I can make a little autumn leaf here. Well, this is just on crafts now. I don't think I'm baking anymore. Do you see that? And with our beautiful pastry brush here, we can add this, stick it on a little. Now this is fun. We're just having fun now. But come on, how cute is that? Who says pastry can't be fun? Who says healthy eating can't be fun? So I've got my crust here. Just gently lift it up, make sure it's not sticking. Back here, I've got my pie plate. I'm gonna go ahead and fill this guy up. Again, we're only doing single crust, right? So I'm gonna fill it up with my pie filling. This, ah. Oh. I really wish I had smell vision right now for y'all. This smells so, I think the word is cozy. Do you know what I mean by cozy? This smells cozy. I need to have a fire. I need to be in a turtleneck sweater, a tasteful turtleneck sweater. They do exist. I've seen them. People in Seattle wear them all the time. You have a little leftover filling. Don't overfill this. Everyone's pie dishes are this, aren't the same. It's better to leave a little extra out than have this all over your oven. Oh, that sauce. Again, fresh ground pepper, thyme, sage, celery, parsnips. And then we've got our crust here. And I'm just going to put her over the top. And this vent is not just there for decoration. It's allowing steam to escape. So we go around. We pinch everyone. We're getting these guys here. If this class is getting you guys excited about health, if you're wanting to explore more healthier options, I'm always doing it. I have a lot of family members who are type 2. That is the great thing about the American Diabetes Association. They deal with everyone at all stages. Pre, type 1, type 2 gestational is really important. So if you guys are considering, hey, I want to look more into this, again, the American Diabetes Association, their diabetesfoodhub.org, and also Alignment Health Plan are wonderful partners to today who really appreciate good health. I'm just going around. I'm pinching everyone. Finger pinchers going around. And it looks like Amy has a question. Yes, please. Do you have to grease the bottom of the pan? You do not need to grease the bottom of the pan. Our filling is going to be plenty fine in there. I've got a little egg wash. This is what gives us shine. We're not making scrambled eggs, people. We do not want puddles of egg wash all over the top, okay? Just a gentle coating here, okay? If you're not going straight into the oven, make sure your filling is cooled down first. If you try to put this in the fridge right now, all of our air mattresses are gonna melt out. So just some nice shine. It's the little extra things in life, just a little shine. I call this a rustic crimp. Again, if you're going around more, pinchers here, that's how you do a little crimp. Little crimp, little crimp. You can keep going around and around to give perfect little crimps. If it's Wednesday night, your family should be thankful you made them this delicious meal. You don't need to do all the little crimps, all right? Just get it out. You don't have to. This is wonderful. 
This is depending how, whether or not you were an artsy craftsy kid in school. I mean, not bad. Are you ready? Are you ready for the TV magic? I am so excited to show our finished product. In the oven, 400 degrees, 20 to 25 minutes. Our filling is cooked. So what we're looking for really is just to get our crust cooked through. Nice crispy brown. We're looking for golden brown. That's how we get our flakes. I think a lot of people maybe are used to baking like 350 degrees. We need a high heat, cold fat, hot oven. Cold fat, hot oven. I hope you guys are tossing and turning tonight later and I just come in. Cold fat, hot oven. I want it, if it, view it in your cells. Cold fat, hot oven. So 400 degrees. 400 degrees. We are looking for 20 to 25 minutes. Our filling's cooked. We're just looking for a beautiful crust. That steam, that little hole we made in the center is going to allow the steam to escape, so we're still going to get a crispy crust. Here it goes. dun da 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 dun da 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 Oh, I'm so excited for this one for you guys. We baked a crust earlier. Please shout out to Chef George. Let him know. Give him some love. He was the one who did not allow my pie to burn. And, and it looks like Elizabeth has a question. Yes, there she is. Our would, finished product. Go ahead. Yes, please. Would you use egg wash on a store-bought crust? You can absolutely use a store-bought crust, but it's hard to find a whole wheat store-bought crust. What, why I like to cook this myself is because you're then guaranteeing how much fat and how much sodium is in there. You can absolutely use store-bought if you need to, but I really challenge you to make this and save it for later in your freezer, like I said, if you're looking for, if you want to make this, just because at least you know you're getting that nuttiness, you know what's in here, guarantee, guaranteeing ingredients. We did, I did three little leaves on this one, three holes. Beautiful. So I'm just taking, did you guys see that? See the little flakes that came off? That's because we did cold, fat, hot oven. And I'm going to use actually a spoon for this guy to get it out. It's okay if it gets a little messy. It's delicious. Because we don't have that bottom crust. That beautiful pie right there. Let me go to a side view. I don't know if you guys can see that. But... Look at that. Look at our, you see all that beautiful filling. You can kind of see, look how flaky our crust is. Yes, we're using plant-based butter. Yes, we're using whole wheat flour, but that doesn't mean we're not gonna have that flaky texture when we bite into this. Should I do it? I'm gonna do it. I mean, it's raining outside, we're together. Let, let's, let's do it, ready? serious come on now i'm getting so much earthy sweetness from the carrots in here that crust just went flaked right into my mouth all the herbs are balancing out i have nothing to say i'm so happy right now i'm all the way up here my arms can't even reach how i am right now guys amazing uh, cooked beautifully flaky we made our sauce. You definitely can do this over two days. You can keep your crust. And now you have a great pie crust recipe for future holiday baking. If you make this, you guys see the side again. This is just too beautiful. Look at this. If you guys make this, we would love to see it. Please share your meal with, at, with homemade. Share it at, with the, I'm going to say this, at AM Diabetes ASSN. We would love to see what you guys have. Again, if you're looking for holiday recipes, diabetesfoodhub.org. And if you also want to join us for more classes, homemadecooking.com. We have a whole schedule up. We'd love you to come. We're doing vegan pasta alfredo coming up. That's going to be a really good one. We'd love to have you join. We want to thank so much. Viola. 
Julie from the American Diabetes Association for joining us, for answering our questions. We want to thank Alignment Health Plan for partnering this class and supporting healthy cooking. And most importantly, we want to thank all of you. Your time is precious, and we are so happy every time you join us for a class, and we can't wait to cook with you again. Happy holidays. I'm saying it. Happy holidays, everyone. Thanks so much.